The Ministry of Health has not been able to engage uh, the communities affected. It has not been able to explain um, the rationale for the enclosure, uh, what was the expected outcome, uh, what were the metrics, and how has that changed since the last two weeks of the enclosure. Uh, what, uh, what progress have we made? Instead of getting that feedback uh, from the Ministry of Health and getting our people together, because we are not going to defeat uh, uh, the coronavirus uh, through bureaucracy, we are going to defeat it by our population taking ownership and playing their part in that particular uh, fight, which is uh, critical for all of us. Now, that lack of communication and feedback is worrying because you don't know, we don't know how many tests have been done so far, um, how many people have been found positive, uh, how many people have recovered, and, and what was the expected outcome in getting this uh, cessation, restriction of movement. Even after the end of the next two weeks, what is the criteria that the Ministry of Health and the public health experts are going to use to determine whether their action was a success or not. So these things need to be answered by the Ministry of Health for us to be able to go forward. I want to specifically speak about ISLI. ISLI has a population of 260,000. The overwhelming majority of its residents are either unemployed or engaged in low-wage informal employment and are struggling to make ends meet. ISLI is also a major business hub, the third largest, in fact, after the CBD and Westlands. An estimated 120,000 people go to work in ISLI every day, and another 100,000 go to trade uh, and shop there. So if you look at that, their livelihoods, incomes, and well-beings of all these people, uh, which is at risk as a result of this particular order. The closure has also placed additional hardships on the poor people of Kamkunji. You know, by the government's own statistics, Kamkunji is the neighborhood with the largest number of vulnerable communities and neighborhoods in Kenya. Kamkunji has 235,000 informal settlement residents. It is bigger than Madare, it is bigger than Kibera, it is bigger than many other places where you would expect uh, to find um, uh, problems. So the residents of the informal settlements such as Kiambiu, Kenyago, Kanuku, Motherland, as well, as well as neighboring areas such as Majengo and Blue Estate have been hit hard and are already reeling from the economic shock of the prolonged closure. These are communities that even before the COVID-19 were living on the margins of society and struggling to survive. Many of them have no safety net and any social protection. They are on their own. They are fast approaching the end of their coping mechanism and they would soon have nothing left to cushion them from the hard socioeconomic effects of the restrictions. We're starting to stare at a humanitarian situation. We need quick mitigation measures to address the negative consequences and the closure of places like Isli. Otherwise, we are going to have hunger. So that's why I think the government needs to rethink its approach.